Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another advanced tutorial episode of War in the East 2. This will be probably the shortest tutorial I've ever recorded uh, because uh, I just wanted to show you guys uh, really two small um, tips and tricks that can uh, dramatically improve the, um, the quality of your life. Uh, especially when playing the Grand Campaign. And the first of these tips and tricks deals with this button, the toggle unit modes uh, isolated uh, on off. In the general tutorial, in the basic tutorial, I, I just skipped, let's say, the, the portion about the unit modes. And I said that this button um, highlights the isolated units, units only. Uh, this is not true. It took me a while to realize it, but when I discovered it, I was like, oh my god, I have to make a tutorial about it. Because um, most of the people, I assume, they don't know this. But if you click on this button, you see that besides the isolated units, you see that there are uh, three additional different um actually four different colors around different units. And each of these colors does have a um, specific meaning. Um, all the units which have just arrived on the map, like we can have a look also um, at this one here, those who are arrived, uh, that, have, that have arrived on the map on this turn, do have this very flashy light green around the unit counter. Units which are in refit mode, they do have this light blue uh, counter, and this is also true for the fortress units. Exactly, they are here uh, in uh, uh, refit mode. Uh, in the tutorial, in the Italian tutorial, I said this highlights the fortress units, but no, this only highlights the units units in refit mode. And then we have the units which are about to let's say be transferred from the map like in this case we have the um, 20th mechanized core that is getting disbanded on turn number six and if from what I am uh, from what I've seen units which are let's say about to disband or getting removed or transfer away from the map within seven within the, within the next seven turns will have this light orange um, color around the uh, the counter. And then we do have units in reserve which are surrounded by this um, purple square around their uh, counter. So, and of course you have the uh, red box here meaning that these units are um, isolated. So, um, it can be quite informative, especially um, this will save you plenty of time instead of going through the uh, reinforcements and transfers um, table. Uh, look at every single uh, division. Uh, no, you can just have a, have a look at the map and okay, these these guys have arrived this turn. These guys are about to, to leave and uh, these guys are in reserve. These ones are in refit mode. And that was, let's say, the, the first thing that I wanted to um, show you. The other thing deals with rail transports. Now, what I used to, sorry, what I used to do in the past was to, let's say, bring the 177th Rifle Division, and by the way, these can be extremely useful for the Soviet player and for the Axis player uh, in the, um, let's say, um, advanced turns of the of the campaign. And yeah, so you see, I have here some units. I'm playing with the um, Soviet version of the um, historical order of battle 3.0 mode that I have uploaded on, on the forum and if you uh, know the forum or if you are in the Facebook group or in the Discord channel you know what I'm talking about. If not just go to the forum and download my mod. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, I was saying um, I, I used to take the uh, 177th Rifle Division and I would just move it all the way to the front line. Just to realize that um, I need it, let's say, if, if I move it here, I only have 58 uh, SMPs. And to unload it, I needed at least 100 SMPs. So I was just wasting one turn worth of SMPs. And then I discovered that if I move the division, on, on a hex 
which has a railyard of level 2 or above, then this railyard will facilitate, let's say, the unloading from the railway convoys uh, of my division. And if I now, uh, actually we can have a look here, if I click on train it says 100 SMPs are required. Why if I move it here, and you see now I went from 58 to 12 and the, okay I lost all the all the movement points but uh, I could unload the division on the very same turn in which I moved it and this can be extremely powerful especially from the Soviets um, on day let's say on the very first turns turn between one and four uh, this can be really powerful to move your divisions uh, on railways and then unloading them unload them um, on uh, uh, level 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or whatever uh, rail yards. And um, yeah, that's it already for this tutorial. I know, I know it was quite short, but hopefully you did learn something new. And um, yeah, see you all in the next episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. I wish you all the best and yeah, I hope to see you all in the next uh, episode.